Hi, it's Dwyer, December 23rd, 2022. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, we're at the time of year where you're going to be hitting some family get-togethers. Right, And the gamblers in the room are going to find each other. Right, Understand, we're all looking for sleepers. Everyone knows the favorites. Right, Even I can say, hey, Tyson Fury might be a good bet at heavyweight. Right, We all know the favorites. The key is finding the sleepers. The boxers or the teams, if you're in a betting on sports, that some folks are overlooking, right? Understand, that's where you get your profits. Let me just digress for a second. Canelo, one of boxing's best, boxing royalty, certainly he's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer, right? Just a quick message to Canelo. Right now, BoxRack.com has Makabu as the highest rated cruiserweight in the sport. Right, Canelo, I think you can beat him. I think he lines up well with your left hook. I think he would have a hard time finding you. I think Makabu is a bit overrated. Right, I think Canelo has a much better chance style-wise of beating the cruiserweight champion, Makabu, than he does of meeting defensively blessed mover, light heavyweight champion, Bivol. Right? So if I'm Canelo and I want to make history, and Canelo has made history, he's already won a share of the light heavyweight championship. He beat Kovalev years ago. I would target Makabu more than Bevel, one man's opinion. Let's talk about another sleeper. And this video is really dedicated for sleepers. I believe Canelo would be a sleeper at Cruiser, right? And that would be a bonanza for gamblers. Another sleeper, if you're at that Christmas party and the gamblers have found each other and your relatives, Uncle Lamont, uh, Paulie, whoever, right? Your uh, family members who think they know gambling are talking about the National Football League, right? I'm just telling you one of the biggest games of the year on the regular season schedule is going to be the Buffalo Bills at Cincinnati, right? Just understand, if Cincinnati knocks off the Bills, then you're looking at the Kansas City Chiefs in the one seed in the AFC. But more importantly, you'd be looking at something a lot of gamblers already know. Joe Burrow, as highly touted as he is, is better than advertised. Right? Whatever it takes to be a quarterback, right, to win games, Joe Burrow has it. His team follows him. Joe Burrow was just in the Super Bowl last year, right? The Bengals right now are the boogeymen of the AFC. Some gamblers have sniffed it out. Colin Cowherd, Nick Wright. They're all over Cincinnati. You need to look at that Buffalo-Cincinnati game carefully. Right now, Buffalo's the one seed in the AFC. Right, I'm just telling you, if Cincinnati, who's already beaten KC, if Cincinnati knocks off Buffalo, right, just understand that in the playoffs, whatever the line, you're going to have to have a little something-something on Cincinnati, right? Make no mistake, if KC becomes the one seed in the AFC, that's how I'm rolling in the AFC. But Cincinnati's the sleeper, right? Um... You know, at that Christmas party, people come over and say, hey, how do you like, you know, who do you like? That's the question, right? Who do you like? Right? Cincinnati has to be on your list. 
They're real, folks. Just look at the record. They started the season slowly. They had injuries. Jamar Chase was out for a bit. Right now they're on the field. They're dangerous. Now let's talk about boxing. You know, I like to shine a light on things that aren't emphasized enough and on sleepers. Now, you know the favorites already. At 135, let's focus on the lightweight division. At 135, the king right now is Devin Haney. Right? Let's just be real. Guy beat Cambosis twice, traveled halfway around the world to do it. Haney's unbeaten, has multiple belts. He's the king. Now, for gamblers like me, I believe Loma is underrated. I believe Haney gets by on foot speed and spacing. I think Loma is the rare fighter who could give him a hard time. We're all looking at that Haney-Loma matchup, aren't we? Right? Loma's also a southpaw. Haney's jab might not land, right? We're looking at that fight, and that's a major fight. But understand, Loma has a secret. He's much older than the other guys. Let's name two other big names at 135. Gervonta Davis, who I expect to beat Ryan Garcia. Right, Southpaw, pound for pound, one of the biggest punchers in the sport. And, of course, Ryan Garcia, understand the catch weight. For that Gervonta Davis, Ryan Garcia fights 136. Hell, it might as well be 135. I understand Garcia wants to fight at 140, right? But he's fighting Davis at 136. And, of course, you have Shakur Stevenson, who has grown out of 130, who's a very fast southpaw, very accurate southpaw. Right? You'll notice that there are moments in Stevenson fights where Stevenson is so fast. I think Stevenson would beat Loma. Stevenson is so fast that he'll stand in front of a guy, right? A righty who's an arm's length away. And that's Stevenson at his best. Because Stevenson will faint, will faint. The other guy throws a punch. Then Stevenson will blow him up. Right? Very fast counters. Now understand, in this division, Haney, Loma, Davis, Garcia, Stevenson, in this division, the sleeper in the room, the guy, I believe, who would be the betting play, the underdog, the live underdog against all of these guys, the guy who I would have to have a piece of the action on, is Frank Martin. Right now, just to understand what a ringer Frank Martin is. We're going to look back at this era after this gardener out here uh, gets lost and stops wrecking my video. But we're going to look back at this era and we're going to ask ourselves how this fighter has ever been viewed as an underdog. Right? Understand what's in the background. It's one of the best trainers in the sport, Derek James. Right now, we can argue about who's better. Errol Spence, one of the elites at 147, or Jamel Charlo, the gold standard at 154. Right? At 154, there is a top floor. It's Jamel Charlo. Right? I'm just here to tell you that after looking at this Michelle Rivera, Frank Martin film, I think an argument can be made right now that Frank Martin is Derek James's best work. In my opinion, this fighter, Frank Martin, he's unbeaten, he's 17 and 0. Frank Martin changes the landscape at 135 pounds. You know how you watch Gervonta Davis and you see that he's a little bit methodical and stiff in the pocket. And you know how you always wondered what 
he would look like if he were more defensively blessed. If he had the ability to just get a little bit lower, to lean a little bit more, to roll with punches a little bit more, to have counters already programmed when the other guy is throwing, to have slightly better timing with his counters. If you ever looked at Gervonta Davis and thought those things, folks, you, you don't think those things when you're looking at Frank Martin. Understand, folks, it's all there. It's all there right now. Don't confuse Frank Martin with some guy who's just starting out. He's 27 years old, folks. Now, I understand Michelle Rivera's father is going around telling people that his son was dehydrated for the fight. That in the lead up to the fight, Rivera privately had to go to the emergency room because he had a hard time getting below 144 pounds. Understand, lightweight is 135. Now, if you're a Rivera fan, you need to understand he's not going to be able to stay at 135. He's going to have to move to 140, which might actually help him. Because understand, there's an open question, and yes, I'm bitter about losing a better than 4-1 to one payday. There's an open question on whose game has degraded more. Teofimo Lopez is, and I thought Lopez lost the Sander Martin fight. I want people to do the math. If there's a knockdown in a 10-round fight, and that round is a 10-8 round because of the knockdown, that would mean that to offset that two-point difference, Lopez would have had to have won six of the remaining nine rounds against Sander Martin. Is that the fight you saw? That's not the fight I saw. I was on the Martin side of the play. Officially, I lost. Let's just say unofficially, I like that bet. Not the part where the bunny leaves my wallet, but the fact that I thought Martin won that fight. Well, understand, whose game has degraded more at 140? Teofimo Lopez's game, and folks, he's stiff. You know how to beat him. He himself told you that Martin wouldn't stay in the pocket and moved away from him. Well, he had problems with that, didn't he? I thought Martin outboxed him several rounds. I don't know how the judges gave Lopez that fight. I'll concede Lopez landed more body shots. The other guy who's degraded at 140 is the former undisputed at 140, Josh Taylor. Right? I know he's fighting Catterall again. What happened to the, Josh, to the Josh Taylor who actually beat Jose Ramirez? He's been missing. Taylor likes to crash the pocket too much. He doesn't emphasize his back foot. Well, let's just say Rivera's going to have to leave 135. He had problems making weight against Frank Martin. I'm just here to tell you it wouldn't have made any difference. Martin's advanced. Martin's a southpaw. Martin fights low. More importantly, Martin knows how to lean. He doesn't just use his legs for defense. Folks, he uses leans for defense. This is a defensively blessed fighter. In other words, you throw a punch... Right? You're facing him. You throw a right hand. Rivera was orthodox. Right hand's his dominant hand. And Frank Martin can just lean back and have the punch stop here. Then he comes in with interesting counters. Understand, this is a southpaw who will not only counter with his dominant hand, in other words, after he leans and your right hand is unsuccessful, right, he'll come back with a left, straight left, his dominant hand. Then he'll throw his non-dominant hand as the second punch on a counter. His right hook. Folks, that combination dropped Michelle Rivera. Frank Martin's able to counter off leans. He's much better defensively 
than Gervonta Davis. I'm not saying he's the puncher Gervonta Davis is. What I am saying is he's much more elusive than Gervonta Davis. Understand, too, the pocket moves a bit with Martin. We all thought that with Rivera's legs, Rivera would be the one with the foot speed advantage. No, that was not the case. Frank Martin moves just enough where you don't know where he is. This is the southpaw who moves very well to his right. Right, very well to his right. He has a 3D element to his game where he's low, but he's able to pop up and throw combinations. Skill-wise, I'm not sure. I am not sure if Haney, Gavante Davis, Shakur Stevenson, or Ryan Garcia have more skills than this guy. In other words, understand what you have with him. You have a guy who's overlooked, who's viewed as new, who has one of the sport's best trainers in his corner, who has game plans where the other fighter's tools, Rivera's jab, was non-existent, right? Because Martin has excellent head movement. You have the kind of boxing skills where if there is not a knockdown in a fight against Gravante Davis, I don't see how Davis would get a decision against Frank Martin. Unless, of course, you have the Teofimo Lopez Sandor Martin judges judging the fight. Right? In a clean fight, I think Martin outboxes a Gervonta Davis. Now, I'll concede. I'll concede. Things get complicated when you talk about Loma, because Loma is ambidextrous. I'll concede. Things get complicated when you talk about Shakur Stevenson, because Stevenson is blessed with faster hand speed than Frank Martin. But I believe this is an easy choice for gamblers because just like you know the public even with Cincinnati in the Super Bowl last year in the NFL undervaluing the Bengals who are one of the hottest teams in the NFL right who beat the Chiefs just like you know Joe Burrow and company in a big game, especially on the road, at KC or at Buffalo, would be the underdog, and you'd be getting points. In other words, you might have your own analysis, and your own analysis might show that the Bengals are better than the Bills. Then they're going to give you points. I'm just telling you, Frank Barton likely would be the underdog against all of these guys. Haney, Loma, Gervonta, Shakur Stevenson, even Ryan Garcia. Right, so, if you want a treat, take a look at the highlights from the Frank Martin, Michelle Rivera fight. I'm just telling you, I'll be surprised if Martin hasn't forced Rivera to find another weight class. Right, this guy is in his prime, folks. He's dangerous, understand. Stevenson and Davis surprise a lot of people because they're southpaws. Right? Well, understand, Martin is a southpaw. I believe Martin would know how to deal with the angles. Right? I believe Martin is the guy who, when Stevenson has orthodox fighters frozen, because that's what hand speed does. Right? An accurate, fast-handed guy is going to freeze the opponent because the opponent's thinking, man, if I make a wrong move, I'm going to get hit with this guy straight left. Right? I believe Martin's timing is so good. He would be the lead against Stevenson. 
he would be the one throwing punches on Stevenson. Right, so this is a major sleeper. Let me also say, too, one floor up, because some of these guys gain weight. 135 is a bit artificial. I believe Haney is going to have to leave the division soon. Right, he'll stick around to fight Loma, then I think he moves to 140. Understand, it might be more wide open at 140 than people realize, because the best at 140, Regis Progre, has a secret. He's older than you think. Right, I believe Regis is something like 33 years old. At heavyweight, he'd still be a young man. Not so much at 140. Right, so with Teofimo Lopez's game dropping off, with Josh Taylor's game dropping off, with Lopez practically telling you that he is a problem with movers, right? Just to understand that right now, I think Haney probably could beat Lopez, right? Who has a following, and it's about box office, right? I'm just telling you some of these younger guys might be able to wait out Regis Progre, right? Progre is a master in the pocket, not so much outside the pocket. I agree you can't really hang in the pocket with him. He probably beats Ramirez, right? But movers, guys with hand speed from outside the pocket might be able to take him out. I'm just saying 140 is more open than we want to believe, right? And a guy like a Frank Martin, who might take over things at 135, might be able to take over things at 140, right? Just put his name in a book, underline the word sleeper. If Frank Martin fights one of the bigs at 135, pay close attention to the odds, right? I'm just telling you with this guy's defense, he's not getting dropped early. Let's just call it as it is. He's not getting dropped early. So the over-under... Let's see what the over-under is, right? If it's seven or eight, you need to go over. If Frank Martin faces Haney, Loma, Gervonta, Shakur, or Ryan Garcia, right? I'm just telling you, Garcia is too one-handed for him, right? I think Martin would beat Garcia, right? If a boxing match breaks out against any of the guys, Martin would hold his own. Right, this guy is championship level right now. Right, for gamblers, we all know the favorites, right? I don't have to be Nostradamus or Einstein to know that Pat Mahomes has the capability to win a Super Bowl, right? I mean, everyone knows about those teams, right? If somebody comes up to me again and starts talking about Jalen Hurts, I might slug him, right? Hey, even I know about the, the Eagles, right? What separates gamblers are how many people know about the sleepers, right? This guy, Frank Martin, is a real sleeper, folks. He's live right now. Just like at 147, Boots Ennis and Virgil Ortiz, you need to underline their names, right? I've just named two unbeaten fighters. I don't care who they fight. Right? I think based on styles, Virgil Ortiz might be the top of the game at 154. In Jermel Charlo. Right? Because Ortiz, here's a secret, might have the sport's best stationary jab. It's a Sonny Liston type jab. I'll agree. I'm, to those with moving jabs, Tyson Fury, others, okay, fine. I'll agree a moving jab's better than a stationary jab. But just understand, you have a whole group of fighters, and you need to put Frank Martin with them, who are elite, right? Who the public might, because of great careers, value incumbents more than. 
right? I'm sure there are a lot of people who are saying, hey, you know, I would take Errol Spence over Boots Ennis, right? All I'm saying is while Spence is a great fighter, right, for me, it would come down to the line, right? If I show up at a casino and they're giving me a plus 150 on Boots Ennis, Against Errol Spence, I'll be the casino suckleberry. Well, at 135, the Boots Ennis of 135 is this guy, Frank Martin, right? The package is already there, right? This isn't the guy who needs more experience. Folks, he has the skill set right now to beat at least some of the big names at 135. I'll even say he has the skill set right now to beat some of the big names at 140. Serious talent here. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Let me say this too. Michelle Rivera, movers would have an opportunity. Right, Martin is more of a in-the-pocket technician who's athletic and defensively blessed. A mover, someone who can stick and move. Rivera, Devin Haney. The way 140 is configured right now with in-the-pocket guys, Ramirez, Progray, uh, Josh Taylor, who has a back foot but doesn't use it. Right, He's busy crashing the pocket. He's fighting Jack Catterall in a rematch. Right, he might get caught on the way in there. His skills have deteriorated. Right, given the lay of the land at 140, a guy who understands the value of a back foot jab volume, strategic counters, right, a Rivera, a Devin Haney, they might be able to come in and just take over the division based on styles. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by. Happy holidays.